I V M. Hey, Raghavi. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had a cream burn in your face? What? Like a burn in your face? It's it's a thing that people say in Bangalore. It means that mm-hmm. when you think or believe something and you put all your efforts into defending it, and then the thing you're defending turns out to be the exact opposite. It's the thing. It puts a bun in your face. Okay. A cream bun is just a more humiliating version of a normal bun in your face. Yeah. So just um, literally, as we are recording this episode, Nisha, mm-hmm. uh, I ended up very confidently making something that I thought was coffee. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh wow, let me add some more decoction to my coffee to make it thicker. Not realizing that I was using a container that contains some soy sauce in it. Ooh. So it may not be a bun in my face, but uh, it did take my confidence several notches down. You know, that's that not helps. how you make soy milk, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Have you ever wondered why women don't do more crime? Well, we're here to tell you, there's misconduct all the time. Women are thieves and murderers. That's gross misconduct. Con artists, money launderers. Hmm, criminal misconduct. Financial fraud, that's hard to track. Takes some planning, but still misconduct. Even breaching a contract. That's more civil though. Misconduct. Misconduct We tell you all about women that suck Things that make you say, what the? It's Misconduct Hello, hello, hello and welcome to Misconduct We are a podcast about women that did some crime stuff And now they have to defend whether or not they did that crime stuff (laughs) I am Raghvi And I am Nisha And we welcome you back to part two of our series on Chanda Kocher, the mm-hmm. former managing director and CEO of ICICI Bank, mm-hmm. a woman who was once part of just a handful of women that held important executive positions in India, mm-hmm. a woman that every other woman wanted to be, mm-hmm. and then her hard fall from grace. <laughs> Oof. So in our last episode, we covered Chanda's early life, how she found her calling at ICICI Bank, Mm -hmm. how she rose through the ranks and to occupy the top position in the bank. That's right. And in this episode, we'll take you to the other side of fame and fortune. So we'll be covering Chanda's life after 2016, when a whistleblower let the world know that Chanda, her husband Deepak and her many associates may have been engaging in some fraudulent activities (laughs) involving the vast monetary reserves of ICICI Bank. But before we get into it, our disclaimers, this Mm -hmm. podcast is not meant for children, listener discretion is advised. So let's take a quick minute to sum up what we know about Chanda Kocher, ICICI Bank and Videocon so far. Mm -hmm. A young girl called Chanda Advani moved from Jaipur to Mumbai City in the 1980s to make her fortune. Mm -hmm. She was smart and able, found herself in a management trainee position at ICICI Bank, which was Mm -hmm. just a small financial institution at the time. From 1994 to 2008, Chanda would be responsible for leading the bank through its best years, immense growth, rapid expansion of its cash reserves and assets, Mm -hmm. and most importantly, diversification of business. Mm -hmm. At the incredible age of 48 years, Chanda was Mm -hmm. appointed the MD and CEO of ICICI Bank, turning her into a very powerful and influential woman overnight. Chanda's professional growth was supported greatly by her husband Deepak and their two children. Chanda also got her share of glory, winning many awards and featuring in publications like Forbes and Fortune magazine. She would be representing her peers in industry before the government of India. Hmm. And abroad, she would be representing the Indian financial industry at platforms like the World Economic Forum. Nice. She was earning accolades, honorary degrees and was even awarded the Padma Bhushan in 2011, one of India's highest civilian honours. Good for her. Mm -hmm. As she was growing, so was another company by the name of Videocon. Hmm. Videocon's founder, Venugopal Dhut, took the company from its humble beginnings and aimed for the stars. Soon, it was an electronics, retail, telecom, energy and consumer goods mega power. But around 2009 to 2012, Videocon was struggling a bit financially Mm -hmm. and they also wanted to diversify their business. So Venugopal came to ICICI Bank for a loan and Chanda Kocher, the head of the sanctions committee at the time, approved a whopping loan amount of about 3,250 crores or 32.5 billion rupees to Videocon. These loans were dispersed in six installments over a period of time, of course, but it was still a lot of money. 
That was a beautiful summary. Thank you. Yes, in 2016, a man named Arvind Gupta, who's an investor both in ICICI Bank and Videocon, took some time out to figure out if his investments were still good, mm-hmm. and he found, to his surprise, that Videocon was losing a lot of money very, very quickly. And yet, ICICI Bank decided to go ahead and approve massive loans to the company, which means if Videocon went down, then ICICI Bank would lose all its money in the company. So Arvind sent in multiple whistleblower complaints to ICICI Bank and various regulators. authorities in India but his complaints fell on deaf ears it would take another 2 years for this complaint to resurface and that resurgence can be attributed to something much larger mm-hmm. than just ICICI bank and videocon mm-hmm. around 2016 and 2017 many many banks in india were losing money to bad loans that they had made over the years prior effectively 2017 was kind of the 2008 global recession equivalent for india Right. The Reserve Bank of India and the Parliament were forced to step in and take measures to ensure that the biggest banks in the country do not tank due to their inability to realize the loans that they had made. And with all that background information, we are now ready to dive into part two of this episode on Chanda Kocher. That was hectic, mm. but I'm sorry to do this. Before we jump into understanding the case that went down in 2018, we need to do more context setting. <sighs> are you ready, Nisha? I mean, you haven't done context setting in so long. I've missed it. Oh, please come, come. educate is, me. Yeah, yeah. Come, come, guys. Ashi, Let me do some fact dump. This is education and entertainment. Edutain me. Nice. <laughs> I I shall edutain. Just, Just I will <laughs> tell you words. Yes. So we're going to take a few minutes to understand some banking and corporate regulations in India. Mmm, saucy. Yay. <laughs> So the Banking Regulation Act 1949 is a legislation that regulates all banking firms in India. Hmm, I wonder what gave it away. Maybe it was the name. Hmm, <laughs> that was back then names were pretty clear, dude. I quite <laughs> like it that way. So this, you know, regulation provides a framework under which commercial banking in India is supervised and regulated. So hmm. it also empowers the Reserve Bank of India or the RBI to regulate, control and inspect the banks in India. So the RBI not only licenses banks that operate in India, but it's also an enforcement agency that can dole out punishments and fines if somebody violates the act. So hmm. there is a curious section in the Banking Regulation Act which is section 20 this provision restricts how banks can give out loans and advances hmm. so very specifically for the context of our current case it says that no bank can hand out a loan to its directors that makes hmm. sense right yeah. like it's yeah it's a bit of a conflict how can a board of directors approve a loan to one of its own people sounds like a conflict but there is a small exception to this which is where a director can be given a loan in some very specific cases for things like personal expenses so if you remember the case that we are talking about chanda coach's whole case it's about you know 3000 ish crore rupees mm-hmm. worth of loans and i don't think an office desk and chair sort of expenses would need that much money okay but mm-hmm. like what about um... no okay so you may ask nisha you know if you were kind of not a nice person so if loans can't be given to a director is mm-hmm. it technically a violation if a director's other company gets a loan is that what you're going to ask me yeah yeah because it is nisha okay. section 20 has thought about this so you can't also give a loan to any firms where your own director has an interest okay but sure mm-hmm. but what about okay so now you may ask what about the director's relatives is that right hmm. yes yes yeah do that also why oh. are you so twisted in your thinking nisha okay okay but what if no no like not a, a no not a relative's friend either hey Fine, man. I give up. Can't even defraud anyone in this damn country anymore. Yes, that is exactly the point. Thank you. So, additionally, directors have some duties that are applicable to them. For one, under the Indian Companies Act 2013, under Section 166, a director must always act in the interest of the company for most. So that means they have to act without conflict to the company itself. So they can never attempt to gain any undue advantage of any kind, especially that's monetary that takes away something from the company that they're supposed to, you know, manage. Hmm, hmm. And as part of their fiduciary duties, directors must always keep the interests of the company and its shareholders ahead and above their own personal interests. Hmm. So all in all. directors must exercise their duties with due and reasonable care and skill is this clear overall yeah i actually just had a flashback of when i was studying commerce and i had to like read about the companies act and then oh. i just completely wiped it out of my 
it. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's yeah. fair. <laughs> so there are a lot of responsibility associated with directors, but you might know this even without me having to tell you. Listed companies, you know, yeah. obviously have infinitely more responsibilities Correct. because it's no longer private funds that are in question, right? Hmm. It's other people's money, your money and my money. Hmm. So public companies are grilled a lot more on their spending and investments, and they are governed quite extensively on whether their decisions, especially monetary decisions, are actually correct. Hmm. So if you fail as a listed company to disclose some material facts to the Securities Exchange Board of India, you know, like a massive loan that might result in huge losses, Mm -hmm. not disclosing that stuff properly and giving reasons for doing the things that you did is the kind of stuff that can get you into trouble. Hmm. And ICICI Bank, hmm, guess who went public in 2007 just before Chanda Kocher became its MD and CEO? So... (laughs) Yeah, you get where I'm going with this, right? Oh, Chanda. You in trouble, girl. (laughs) Uh, You have no idea. (laughs) So now that the context setting is done, let's Mm -hmm. get to the crux of the matter. Chanda Kocha? No, we're going to talk about men. (laughs) (sighs) Love that. So first up is Deepak Virendra Kocha. Uh, Mm -hmm. Chanda Kocher's husband. As we said in the last episode, Deepak is an alum of Harvard University where Mm -hmm. he got himself a degree in an advanced management program. He formerly studied with Chanda at the Jamnalal Bajaj Institute of Management Studies, which Mm -hmm. is where they met. He got a master's degree in finance from this institute. Mm -hmm. Chanda and Deepak eventually married and had two children who were adults by now. Very little is actually known about Deepak's life. Mm-hmm. Chanda refers to him consistently in interviews, defining him as her rock, mm-hmm. someone who stands by her and supports her in all her professional endeavors. Mm-hmm. She also mentions multiple times that Deepak handles the kids whenever possible, as she usually cannot make the time. Hmm. That's a good relationship. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. From public records, however, we can find some information about Deepak's professional life. Mm-hmm. In December 2008, Deepak set up and was made director of a company called New Power Renewables Private Limited. Mm-hmm. Three years later, he set up another company with a similar name, New Power Technologies Private Limited. He's also a director in some other companies set up between 2009 and 2021. Okay. In New Power though... Deepak appears to be a majority shareholder Mm -hmm. and both companies are private. So a lot of their dealings are closed off from the public. Hmm. How sad for us. (laughs) Yeah. New Power Renewables was set up as an independent power producer in the renewable energy space. Okay. The Hindu reports that since 2008, the company has amassed about 700 megawatts of renewable energy assets. Mm -hmm. At the time, it was also reported that the company had energy infrastructure projects in the pipeline in Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Rajasthan, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh. Okay. Wow. Pretty cool. So Mm -hmm. prior to New Power, Deepak appears to have been a financial services entrepreneur with a company called Pacific Capital Services. Okay. So publications have largely referred to Deepak as a low-profile first-generation entrepreneur. <laughs> okay, that is hilarious mm-hmm. because here is a business standard report about Deepak Kocher's blog. Okay? okay, this is what the business standard says. It says in his blog, Kocher described himself as one of the elite independent power producers in renewable energy. This humble man with new power renewables had a dream to eradicate the problems of electrification taking place in the rural areas of India. That's what his blog post says. So, hmm, hmm. humble is a word, I guess. Yeah. Is it the right word? Who hmm. knows? He is not Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> so, the next man that we're going to talk about is Venugopal Dhut. Mm-hmm. Venu Gopal is a pal of Deepak and we spoke briefly about him in the last episode. He's the founder, MD and chairman of Videocon Group, a massive manufacturing telecom and retail company in India. Hmm. Videocon is credited often for bringing the color TV revolution to India. Hmm. When it was originally incorporated in 1985, the goal of the company was to make 100,000 or 1 lakh TV sets a year. And sell them also? Not no. just make them? No, to keep them in the house. Yes, of course. Even then, uh, incinerate them. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Even the former Prime Minister of India, Dr. Manmohan Singh, called Videocon the proud face of global India. Oh, oh this is where the cream buns are coming. Oh, I can feel it. <laughs> so, Videocon also held the distinction of using celebrities like Bollywood actors and Indian cricket players to endorse mm-hmm. their products. Hmm. Their marketing strategies were impeccable and it mm-hmm. made Videocon a household name. He is 
a bit of a nepotism baby little bit oh, okay. so his father nandlal dhoot laid the foundations for videocon industries mm-hmm. which venu gopal then pushed into the electronics and consumer goods sector Mm-hmm. In 2015, Forbes magazine listed Venu Gopal Dhoot as the 60 first 61st. <laughs> Just <Yeah>. say it. <laughs> as the 61st richest person in India. <laughs> And estimated his wealth at around 1.19 billion US dollars. Damn. Yeah. Much like Chanda Kochar, Venu Gopal has won many awards for his work ethic and business savvy and has spread his wings across various industries such as mm-hmm. oil and gas, telecom, direct to home TV. But we're not oh, going to sit okay. and list all of them. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering. <laughs> no. Uh, one such industry happened to be renewable energies. Oh, this entire episode is just that sus music, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So remember when Deepak Kochar's company was called New Power Renewables? Remember I remember. That company? I remember yeah. that from like four minutes ago when you yeah. said it. Yeah. <laughs> well, the company was actually set up as a joint venture between Deepak and Venu Gopal. No. <laughs> Both partners had a fifty percent share in the company, and the mm. original directors of the company were, in fact, Deepak. Venu Gopal and Venu Gopal's brother Saurabh Dhoot. Mm. In 2012, <laughs> New Power raised capital of about 300 crore rupees from a Singapore-based private equity firm mm-hmm. in return for an undisclosed stake in the company. Eh? In the same year, New Power borrowed about 750 crore rupees from Axis Bank and Central Bank of India. Okay, so like New Power is like flush with cash, right? Although that cash was likely going into electrical infrastructure, which is very expensive. Okay, so. that's that's fair. That explains why they need so much money. But let's get back to VideoCon. Hmm. So things were going okay for VideoCon till they suddenly weren't. In Oops. the year 2018, various creators of VideoCon filed applications to initiate legal proceedings against the group companies, citing VideoCon's failure to make their debt repayment commitments. So. Nasty stuff. Here we go. Yeah, this is usually the first sign that a company is going to go insolvent or file for bankruptcy because the vultures have come for their money back. They like give me give me give me. <laughs> That's how it is. So by June 2019 the company had stopped trading on the stock exchange and entered into corporate insolvency proceedings. In August 2019 the Mumbai bench of the National Company Law Tribunal consolidated about 13 such creators applications and by June 2021 the tribunal approved Videocon's purchase by Vedanta Group giving the company new ownership and ousting Venu Gopal entirely. Sounds like a mega fall from grace. That seems like the theme. of this mm. two part episode right in fact videocon was facing trouble all the way back in the late 2000s so in 2008 after a series of investigations into irregularities in the licensing of telecom spectrums you might remember this nisha the 2g <laughs> spectrum scandal my god who can yeah. forget who can so videocon telecom seems to be one of those that got stuck in this entire nice. scam there are many telecoms that were just not really guilty so to speak but mm. they had to get a 2g license and they did what they had to do but many of them ended up getting their licenses cancelled so videocon's telecom 2g spectrum license was cancelled after this investigation this hit videocon pretty badly because in 2012 credit swiss house of debt report outrightly said that videocon posed a concentration risk to indian banks with many banks having given it loans without appropriate asset due diligence <sighs> I know heavy words, but basically it's saying, "Hey, bro, don't trust VideoCon." Essentially, yeah. Credit Suisse said, "Credit Sus." <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. I want to let everybody know that Nisha interrupted me from proceeding <laughs> so she can make this joke, and I love her for it. Thanks. <laughs> so as part of its attempt to divest non-performing businesses, VideoCon sold its direct-to-home TV business to Dish TV in 2016. So that's another business gone. Later on, Airtel bought Videocon's telecom spectrums or whatever was left, which mm. basically took Videocon out of the mobile telecom business entirely. So by 2018-19, is anyone surprised that bankruptcy proceedings were filed at all? Oh, who could have seen this come? Everyone and their mamas. Everyone. And I'm going to list Videocon's top creditors. The first one is SBI Bank, to which Videocon owed 10,994 crore rupees. So the first clown. 
is SBI Bank. The second one, IDBI Bank, nine thousand five hundred crore rupees. Central Bank, four thousand nine hundred and sixty nine crore rupees. And fourth on this list, ICICI Bank, with three thousand two hundred fifty nine crore rupees. My God, how can one corporate lose so much money? Because they bought too much avocado toast. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think that's enough for context setting. That's all we need to do. Yeah, you're right. It's time for a break. Welcome back everyone after that break. So, now that you have all that background about Deepak Kochar, Videocon, let's get back to Chanda Kochar herself. Ah, oh, finally. <laughs> Remember yeah. the last episode we mentioned that Chanda approved thousands of crores of rupees in loans to Videocon, all from 2009 to 2012. Mhm. Do you also remember how we spoke about the non-performing asset crisis in India that hit the country around 2016, 2017? Yeah. And as I'm sure you recall the information we gave you mere minutes ago about how Videocon was running in heavy losses near 2016. Yeah, I remember. So what do you think happened? Videocon bounced back and Chanda got all her loans back. <gasps> You're <laughs> right. No. <laughs> oh. What? <laughs> in June 2017, mm-hmm. ICICI Bank declared that its accounts of the Videocon Industry Groups and its group companies as non-performing assets. Oh. Okay. And about 87% of the original loan amounts made by ICICI to Videocon remain unpaid as of this date. Okay. Mm-hmm. And when this declaration shit hit the fan. Okay, I just want to call one thing out here. I had an Ola postpaid payment <laughs> of 250 Dude, rupees. Yes. One I'm time with you on this. Yeah, and then I'm sorry, but I was given a lot of shit for that. Like a lot. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. They charge you like I don't know like 100 rupees fine per day. Like who do you think you are? And also, I don't know how they. I mean, they never collected it, of course. But more importantly, <laughs> like this happened like during like lockdowns and stuff. Like, Ugh. have some shame, guys. Indeed. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Also, I just I didn't see it most of the time because I did it to the app for a bit. So yeah, we also <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but now we all struggle for autos. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cream bun once again. <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk about all of the drama, right? Mm-hmm. And in the Chanda Kochar case. Yeah. Less than a year after ICICI Bank downgraded its loans in Videocon, mm-hmm. the Indian Express published a report that titled Videocon gets rupees 3250 crore loan from ICICI Bank. Bank CEO's husband gets sweet deal from Venugopal Dutt. No. <laughs> the Indian Express alleged a lot of things in its March 2018 report. Mm-hmm. A lot of it was based on a second complaint made by an anonymous whistleblower. Mm-hmm. Firstly, the Indian Express piece said that Venugopal and Deepak's joint venture, New Power, has been receiving funds from various Videocon companies. Okay. It alleged that the money transferred to New Power was actually meant as a loan from ICICI Bank to be mm-hmm. used towards Videocon's oil and gas business. Okay. In 2010, a company called Supreme Energy, which Venugopal wholly owned, Gave a loan of sixty-four crore rupees to New Power. Okay. <laughs> Now, immediately before this, Venu Gopal transferred most of his shares in New Power to Deepak Kochar, giving Deepak a little over ninety-two percent in total shareholding in New Power. Now. Okay. But Venu Gopal didn't sell his shares of New Power at market value. <gasps> Instead, he sold them for like a. Pittance amount of nine hundred thousand or nine lakh rupees. Oh no, the plot thickens. Like sludge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two years later, Videocon was the beneficiary of the three thousand two hundred fifty crore rupee loan mm-hmm. that ICICI Bank bestowed upon it, nice. as approved by Deepak Kochar's wife, Chanda Kochar. Mm. Now, within months, every single regulatory agency vaguely related to the banking sector in India. Uh-huh. Descended on Chanda, Deepak, and Venu Gopal. All right. The Enforcement Directorate, the big stick that we've mm. spoken about so many times. Yeah. 
were probing 24 suspicious bank transactions into Deepak's account oh. with a total transfer of about 8 crore rupees. Uh oh. The ED was also looking into allegations of money laundering against Chanda Kochar. Okay, those are some heavy charges. The ED does not take money yep. laundering yep. lightly. Yeah. So, the income tax department was also probing the acquisition of a massive house by Chanda Kochar, mm -hmm. where the house was apparently bought from the Videocon group okay. and also bought well below market value. Okay. <laughs> the value of this house is alleged to be about 78.2 crore rupees. What happens if you sell a house below market value? Usually, the income tax department thinks you're evading tax and okay. yeah, money laundering again. Okay, great. <laughs> so, in time, the Securities and Exchange Board of India or SEBI sent notices to ICICI Bank and Chanda mm -hmm. asking them to respond to allegations of non-compliance of the listing agreement mm -hmm. and the listing obligations and disclosure requirements regulations of 2015. Okay. This would be the listing agreement that ICICI Bank signed to be able to list as a public company in stock exchange. Oh God, okay. So, not to be outdone, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Hmm. Everybody remembers their amazing website. Of course. They also wanted a piece of this delicious fraudulent pie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now the MC is also like, Bro, this smells of related party transactions. Don't ask me if I'm okay with it. How dare you? Stomp's feet. <laughs> and then he took those same feet and put it in that inquiry door like, Don't close the door on my foot. Oh God, listen, don't be mean, okay? The MCA was just feeling FOMO. They just ah, wanted okay. to be part of it somehow. <laughs> That's all. It was then revealed that the 2010 transfer of mm -hmm. 64 crore rupees to New Power, remember mm -hmm. that one? Yeah. This transfer was done by Venu Gopal's company just one day after a 300 crore loan was sanctioned to Videocon by ICICI oh. Bank. Who approved this loan? It's ch ch Chanda. Chanda wow, Kocha. you get nothing. Yeah. <laughs> when contacted by Indian Express, New Power put out a statement and this read, There is no conflict of interest whatsoever and the transactions have nothing to do with any loans processed by ICICI Bank. Ah, yes. The PR version of saying, I know bro, I was told it's fine only. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that. So the Indian Express also contacted Chanda through ICICI Bank where she was still the MD and CEO at this time. And the bank put out a statement saying, the purported allegations of conflict of interest are completely baseless and unfounded. Hmm. It also said, none of the investors of New Power Renewables are borrowers of ICICI Bank. This is a truth in essence, no? Because New Power's investors were individual shareholders and companies owned by Venu Gopal other than Videocon. Yeah, but they are still owned and controlled by Venu Gopal regardless. Hmm. Because companies are independent, sure, under the law. But there are still people controlling them, right? So, I guess it all comes down to how and why the money moved around. Mm -hmm. A company like New Power was doing really well, already flushed with cash. Mm -hmm. Then why did it need a random 64 crore rupee influx of money? Mm -hmm. And the timing that Chanda's husband's company gets this money and the Kocher family yeah. buys a house way below market value. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly thousands of crores of loans get sanctioned by Chanda for Videocon, which is essentially managed by the guy who sent money to New Power to begin with. Yeah, that's... Uh you perfectly summarize this. Oh, all this is alleged, of course. Yes, the alleged circle joke. <laughs> exactly, yes. So now, MK Sharma, who was ICICI Bank's chairman at the time, he came out supporting Chanda 1000%. So mm. for one, Sharma did not believe that Chanda and her husband took kickbacks for loans that favored ICICI Bank. In fact, Sharma insinuated that the whole media blowout was just to distract from other major issues plaguing the country. On March 28, 2018, the ICICI's board of directors issued a statement reposing its confidence in the corporate governance practices of the bank and the integrity of Chanda Kocha personally and professionally. Oof. Yeah, so official statements are out there of them saying, I full 100% trust her. That was around March 2018. The opinion that ICICI had of Chanda changed in less than two months. 
know. On May 30th, 2018, as part of its regulatory filings, ICICI Bank declared that it was setting up a comprehensive inquiry to look into a whistleblower complaint against Chanda for allegedly failing to adhere by the bank's code of conduct. The statement further read, The board of directors at its meeting held on 29th May 2018 decided to institute an inquiry to be headed by an independent and credible person to examine and inquire into an anonymous whistleblower complaint disclosing certain information alleging in substance that the bank's MD and CEO had not adhered to provisions relating to the code of conduct of the bank and legal and regulatory provisions relating to conflict of interest over a period of time. As also alleging quid pro quo in the course of her work in dealing with certain customers slash borrowers of the bank. That's that's a lot of confidence. I want to have that much confidence in myself, (laughs) bro. They really were like, oops, you were turn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so the thing is, we want to highlight the fact, and I want to really say this because it's a very complicated financial matter. In fact, when you do a Google search for this case after the episode, and you should, because there is just so much about this, you're likely to find some additional names that we haven't even mentioned. You know, names mm. like Mahesh Chandra Punglia. Who is he? Find out, I guess. Pinnacle (laughs) Energy, another company. What is that related to this? But it's too much to get into right now. There are other people involved in the whole situation. All of them allegedly working with Deepak Kocher and Venugopal Dhut. So we can't cover all of this, okay? We'll talk about as much as we can about Chanda Mm. in this situation. But you guys just go read the news or something. Yeah, man. (laughs) Do your job. (laughs) (laughs) It's our job. No, our job is to talk about the women. The rest of it, you Ah, do. (laughs) Fair, fair, fair. So in a different part of the country, the Central Bureau of Investigation was investigating Chanda and her husband. Mm-hmm. Even there, they're like, Daya, Darwaza, Kholo, I don't know what the hell is. <laughs> it's like, kick the door down, yo. <laughs> Everybody just wants a piece of this pie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, between March 2018 and early 2020, the mm-hmm. CBI submerged itself into the case, poring over the financials and loan grant documents of ICICI Bank. Mm-hmm. CBI agents also sifted through thousands of transactions between Chanda, her family, her associates, along with the Videocon group. Okay. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs brought out its big guns. It allowed the Serious Fraud Investigation Office to look into the matter. Now, the SFIO is an agency under the MCA that has specialized expertise to deal with corporate frauds of a very serious and complex nature. Man, MCA, just the big boys are there, no? Let them handle it. Like CBI, SEBI, RBI. Everyone's involved. No no one wanted you here. Relax. Uh, you're just mad because the website is difficult to handle. Yeah, the website sucks ass. <laughs> just, oh my God. Oh. I hate it so much. <laughs> so now this kind of scrutiny is bound to crack even the strongest of people. Mm-hmm. In particular, as ICICI Bank itself did a U-turn and announced an investigation, Chanda was starting to feel cornered. Yeah. Also, In June 2018, ICICI Bank had appointed Justice B.N. Shri Krishna, a retired judge of the Supreme Court of India, to head the committee that was going to investigate Chanda Kochar. Oh yeah, in external investigation means they are just not at all happy with Chanda. Otherwise, they would have been like, yeah, yeah, internal matter, we handled it, peace. Mm. Yeah. So on 4th October 2018, under immense pressure from the media and the CBI, Chanda Kochar decided to submit her resignation to ICICI Bank. Mm -hmm. In a statement to the press, ICICI Bank said, the board of directors of ICICI Bank Limited accepted the request of Ms. Chanda Kocher to seek early retirement from the bank at the earliest. The board accepted this request with immediate effect. Whoever is their PR team, you can draft this better, bro. Just say. This was October 2018. Chanda and Deepak Kocher got about four months to rest it out until... (sighs) <sighs> okay. <laughs> on, on 28 January 2019, the CBI registered its first FIR against Chanda Kochar. It's its first FIR. Yeah, first. We're going to okay. be getting a lot more FIRs and charge sheets and new charge sheets and new new charge sheets. Okay, great. And new power charge. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the FIR claimed criminal conspiracy money laundering as the core allegations. Okay, the big stuff. Yep. Yep. On uh, Jan 31st, 2019, Chanda got more bad news. Mm -hmm. Justice Sri Krishna's report found Chanda to be, and I quote, Mega guilty, bro. What? Really? No, man, I'm kidding. Oh, okay, all right. right. 
wait I'll, i i said that wrong justice okay. shri krishna did not say she's mega guilty bro oh but okay <laughs> <laughs> but his report kind of <laughs> kind of okay But his report did say that Chanda Kochar violated the bank's code of conduct when she mm. issued all those loans to Videocon, and that the transactions clearly constituted a quid pro quo. All right. Now the inquiry report concluded that Chanda had failed to discharge her fiduciary functions okay. and did not make an effort to avoid any conflict of interest. Mm-hmm. These findings meant that ICICI Bank would be treating Chanda's exit as a termination for cause instead of a normal resignation. Oh, that means she she has to pay a bunch of money back to the bank, right? Mhm. Yep, yeah. yep. So ICICI was likely to revoke all her current and future entitlements, okay. which would include unpaid compensation amounts and bonuses. Mm-hmm. They would also take away her vested, unvested, and unexercised stock options and all her medical benefits. Oh damn! And to top it all, she would need to pay back all the bonuses she was given from April two thousand nine to March two thousand eighteen. No, not the bonuses. <laughs> <laughs> so Chanda reacted to this news badly, of course, but still in her classy way, mm-hmm. she put out a statement saying, "I am utterly disappointed, hurt, and shocked by the decision." All while she's screaming into a pillow or something, because I don't know how she's being so cool about it. <laughs> she also said that she was certain that the truth would ultimately prevail. Okay, everyone says that. Okay, it's yes. a very, it's a very vague, <laughs> non-statement to make. So, uh, do you want to take a quick break now? Because it feels like we've been talking for a while. A break? A break? I'm utterly disappointed, hurt, and shocked by your decision. <laughs> Welcome back after the break everyone. So we left this discussion last around Chanda Kochar's dismissal from ICICI Bank after the Justice Shri Krishna report found her guilty of misconduct and breach of fiduciary duty. Now <gasps> misconduct. Oh right. <laughs> It's the name of our thing. <laughs> So despite the fact that Chanda had already resigned, ICICI still dismissed her and stripped her of her benefits. ICICI really said, "You can't quit." I'm firing you. <laughs> Might as well at this point if you need that upper hand, right? Mm. So there is some quiet time after this where Chanda kind of goes under the radar. So mm-hmm. she's kind of contesting the results of the Shri Krishna report around this time because she believes she had not violated any terms of her employment contract or okay. abused her position as a director. In fact, she would make statements later on saying that two out of the alleged six loans were not even approved by her and she claims that they were approved by her predecessor. Ooh. This is still all under investigation by the way. Yeah. But in January 2020, the Enforcement Directorate attached assets belonging to Chanda and her husband as a preemptive measure to secure her cooperation under Indian anti-money laundering regulations. They have the power to do this, absolutely. Mm. So the ED seized Chanda's Mumbai home, some machinery at a wind farm, which was under Deepak's company, New Power, mm. basically, and some other assets that belonged to other companies that they owned. The total value of assets that were attached by the ED was about 78-ish crores. Oh my God! First the bonus. Now her house. Then they take her coffee. Also, she just cannot catch a break. <laughs> she really can't. Poor girl. <laughs> so another blow came two months after, in the form of a Bombay High Court decision. Remember, I said that she was fighting the dismissal by ICICI mm. Bank. So this judgment said that Chanda's dismissal from ICICI was valid under law and contract. So now she was one hundred percent losing that bonus. Well, who cares about money when your husband's getting arrested? Oh no. <laughs> so on uh, 8th September 2020, Mm-hmm. Deepak was arrested at his home and brought into the ED's office for questioning on the basis of new evidence. Mm-hmm. It was reported in multiple publications that an unnamed ED office claimed Deepak's arrest was fueled by his lack of cooperation with the authorities. Okay, okay, wait, wait. Um, I can see how much evidence is mounting against the coaches. That it yeah. doesn't look good for them, right? But I still can't condone arrest for the purpose of mm. intimidation or just because like they're annoyed. That doesn't sound cool. Yeah, agreed. Mm-hmm. accused in india are allowed to not cooperate they they can keep things quiet if they means like they won't incriminate themselves right like that's that has to be in the constitution right um raghav it's in the constitution mm-hmm. right yeah it is i'm just i'm just so happy that you remembered it oh ah. yeah please so the happy. fifth but wrong constitution <laughs> that's the wrong constitution <laughs> it's fine close i'm just happy <laughs> I'm so happy. Okay, I'm gonna cry in a corner. You can go on. 
So, anyway, Deepak was not released on bail for a while, not until March 2021 at least. Mm-hmm. On 4th November 2020 came the first charge sheet from the Enforcement Directorate. Ah. Now, if you guys Google the phrase ED files charge sheet in Chanda Kochar case, mm-hmm. you will get some 200,000 hits from 2020 to 2023. <laughs> yeah. Literally every few months, there's a new charge sheet. Yeah. This first charge sheet is against the big three names, Chanda mm-hmm. Kochar, Deepak Kochar and Benagopal Dhu. Mm-hmm. As predicted, the charges included money laundering. To quote, the charges were for the illegal sanctioning of loans amounting to rupees 1,875 crore to the Videocon group of companies. Hmm. The ED also said that Chanda made specific requests to the Videocon group to invest in companies owned by her husband. News reports said that there there was so much documentary evidence that the CBI had to drag it all into court in five separate trunks. Okay. Apparently, <laughs> it made quite a spectacle in the court. I I just pity that printer which was like just running for four <laughs> days <laughs> to see. get all this done. <laughs> The coacher's lawyer, of course, said that this was all just drama. He said the ED filing five trunks itself is evidence that they do not have a case. And this is why they are just creating a mountain of papers, which is not worth even the ink and paper used. Mm, That is a very weird (laughs) non-issue. Loan documents are very long. So, I don't know. It could have taken five trunks. I wouldn't be surprised if it did. In any case, on 30th January 2021, a special court took cognizance of the charge sheet filed by the ED. So, the court issued summons to Chanda, Deepak and Venu Gopal. And in court, they all pleaded for bail and they got it. Because... They were not a flight risk. Yes. I love that you know so much now. So all the assets that were attached um, basically made sure that their wings were clipped. And Mm. they all had to hand in their passports to the court as well. That sounds pretty standard. It does. I'm just so... Okay. (laughs) I (laughs) mean... So the bond for the arrest was just about 5 lakh rupees though. It's petty cash for the coaches, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Um, But they couldn't travel out of the country without permission. So that sealed that. So on 24th August 2021, the ED submitted new draft charges. But court proceedings would not be happening for a while. In May 2022, there's another FIR filed against both Chanda and Deepak. No one tells you this when you start a true crime podcast. But uh, Mm -hmm. the amount of just waiting around and doing nothing that happens during cases like like this is just too much. It's yeah. it's that one meme of the, the narcos, Pablo Escobar, just standing there all alone. Have you seen yeah. that, that one meme? <laughs> I have. I that have. one. Like, it's just hands behind his back, just yeah. like, and he's sitting on his swing. Like, yeah, mm, exactly. That one. It's <laughs> yeah. just too much of nothing. And then suddenly, like 8,000 things happen at the same time. That's right. And 8,000 things are what happened from mm-hmm. December 2022 to April 2023. That's just like five months. So on 23rd December 2022, both Chanda and Deepak were arrested for real this time. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of their so-called failure to cooperate. So they were remanded to a three-day CBI custody by a special CBI court that was established for their case. Uh, They were in jail during Christmas, which is a day that is historically a national freaking holiday. Why are you so like personally annoyed by their arrest? Dude, because I'm annoyed primarily because no new information came out at this time, you know, like... Mm. What was the new evidence that came out? You know, is there, there was no press release specifically by the right. CBI or ED that said these new charges mandated the arrest, right? In mm. fact, the Bombay High Court had specifically given Chanda bail earlier, ensuring that she wouldn't be able to leave the country. So mm-hmm. I'm kind of confused about whether this was a lapse in process or it was intentionally done, especially during the Christmas holidays, even courts. Don't run during this period unless it's like really freaking urgent, you know? Yeah, I guess. And I I wouldn't really call like a five-year-old festering case like an urgent matter that needs Mm. immediate arrest. That's right. And in any case, the couple is granted bail Mm. as they would be by 9th January 2023 under an additional bond of 1 lakh rupees. And they're asked to cooperate with the authorities this time around. Mm. But the coaches did not take this one lying down. They claimed that the arrest was illegal because the CBI should have ideally taken the court's sanction Mm. prior to the arrest. So no sanction document was presented to the coaches is what they claimed. Okay. And the court agreed. It actually Mm. called the arrest casual, mechanical and perfunctory and clearly without application of mind. Ooh, I hope Mm -hmm. the ED has a vat of aloe vera gel for those third degree burns. (laughs) Yeah, good for them though. Although, I mean, 
just if you have third degree burns please don't put aloe vera go go to the hospital <laughs> oh go to the yeah that's actually we are not uh, we don't give medical advice no <laughs> no this is not a podcast for that in fact we don't give legal advice also so we give just, no advice <laughs> we really don't we yeah, give the we opposite do. of advice yeah we, we say whatever we want to say yeah oh god that's we don't do that we say whatever we want to say and then we say ah, ha, 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 disclaimer it so, was a joke oh it yeah. was it <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, it was. Uh, so on 10 January 2023, Chanda was released from Baikula Jail in Mumbai and her husband was released from the Arthur Road Jail as well. Do you think she was cellmates with uh, Indrani Mukherjee? In 2023, I don't know about cellmates, <laughs> but they're different, right? She, uh, Indrani was yeah, arrested yeah. for like a different Correct. crime. Yeah. And uh, I don't think... Not the financial like, one that possi- we covered. Yeah, and, and possibility of bail was very, very low. Mm. Yeah, for Chanda, it's just it's just money. It's just someone else's money. <laughs> it's okay. Take bail and go. Go to I UK know. if you want to. You sit there. Go. Mm, I wonder who's done that. <laughs> mm, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. What happened to Venugopal Dhut? Oh, right. So, he was arrested three days after the coaches, but mm-hmm. he was only released nice. in March 2023. I guess his lawyers dropped the ball. I don't know. <laughs> um, but the ED gave him a very hard time because he was individually accused of laundering over 60,000 crore rupees in assets to overseas accounts by the ED. And so, this is where the story ends for now. Yay, finally. Ah, ha, ha, you gullible fool. You really thought yeah. this was over? <laughs> Oh no, what else is happening? <laughs> the CBI filed another charge sheet. Oh God, you know what? I anticipated this, but I still believed you. <laughs> so on 8th April 2023, the CBI mm-hmm. filed a fresh charge sheet and this time they changed up the charges a little bit. Mm-hmm. The new charges included criminal conspiracy under the Indian Penal Code Section 120B, mm-hmm. criminal breach of trust under Section 409, okay. and additional provisions of the Prevention of Corrupt Act. Okay. And now we're at the end of the story. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Hi, okay. So, uh, <laughs> there is a chance that this story will develop very quickly in the next two to three months, and mm-hmm. there's also a chance that it will just lay dead in the water for about two to three years. Okay. Or maybe the real treasure was the charge sheets that were filed along the way. <laughs> Also, you missed one thing, which I just remembered. There is a chance, Mm. I don't know how good a chance this is, but there is a chance that Venugopal Dhut might turn into an approver in this case. (gasps) That basically means, yeah, exactly what um, Indrani Mukherjee did, which is, he may give certain information to the court so that he can get away. I don't know how he'll get away with allegations of 60,000 crores being laundered. I don't know how that works, but... If he gives enough information to trap Chanda Kochar and Deepa Kochar, then um, I don't know. We don't know yet. There's just secret reports that it could happen. I've gasped so much, I've run out of breath. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. In, in that case, Chanda Kochar would be screwed. Yeah, she really would. Mm-hmm. So there you have it, folks. It's a classic case of Icarus flying too close to the sun or of Chanda Flying too close to the sun. <laughs> yeah, your 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 idioms just get worse and worse by the end of the season, man. So, uh, sorry. Chanda flying <laughs> too close to the moon. I guess because yeah, sure. Chanda yeah. moon. Okay, anyway. That's right. <laughs> I I find this case super interesting just for the sheer number of twists and turns and mm-hmm. for how awful this must have been for people of our parents' generation in particular mm-hmm. to see a woman grow so much in her field to be admired and revered. To be seen as an icon and then to see her just crash and burn so hard and so quick. Yeah, even growing up, my dad really used to admire her. And even I used to think like people like Chanda Kosher and Indra Nui, they were really cool people, you know, like Mm. giving these really empowered interviews and talking about work versus parenthood like it was a breeze and surrounded Mm. by these men that had to listen to them. I know. It was... Yeah, it was so cool. It's so refreshing and so inspiring that they're just a very important part of our lives that are even realizing it. Yeah, I think in the process of wanting to emulate our heroes, we forget Mm -hmm. to stop and think about how they're actually just humans and humans are capable of making mistakes and are capable of malice just like the rest of us. Ooh. 
that really summed up this podcast so. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is this particular case is subjudice which means we'll have to reserve judgment for a little bit mm-hmm. if we say too much we can get into legal trouble <laughs> and uh, also like nisha said that could be you know next month we can have an update for you right next month yeah. or we'll have an update after the climate crisis has killed all of us i don't know but if a decision comes out while we're all still alive then we at misconduct will definitely cover it for you you know what else we will cover at misconduct What Nisha? It's a musical recap. Yay! <laughs> hey little rock star, don't ever let the haters bring you down. You can turn this all around. Life won't be fair to you, but we all need one more girl boss in town. Lift your feet off the ground. You know they'll say to you, can a woman run a bank and her house? Cast away all your doubts. You can take it to greater heights, then sneakily you help out your crowd until you get found. One minute you're on the Forbes list, breaking the glass ceiling over and over again. Then suddenly you're on the shards. All because maybe you helped a friend. Houses and cars and kickbacks in your hand, and things don't go as you planned. So the moral really here is: Don't fly, don't fly too close to the moon when you deal with some fools. Don't fly, don't fly when you know you might lose. I deal with so much bad news. Don't fly. Don't fly. Don't fly. Don't fly. To close to the moon. That was amazing Nisha. That was really cool and had a moral for us. <laughs> Why yes. not? Yay! <laughs> nice. So this is the end of season 4. Are we at 4? We are at season 4. Damn, I can't really still process it. That's that's. A, it's been a lot yeah. of fun. It's been a ride. Actually, I literally just realized that a little after this episode airs, we would have finished two years. <gasps> no, that is so yeah, cute. Yeah, that is oh cute. God. Time, huh? What a concept. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, and um, yeah. you can come celebrate these two years. Of yes. nonsense with us, mm-hmm. uh, just uh, let's let's have like a keka pika meet cute. Uh, yes. We're gonna do it very soon on the seventeenth of June. Please come join us somewhere in Bangalore. Yes, we've already started getting DMs of people of saying like, yeah. "Hey, I'm not based in Bangalore. Can you please like make Google Meet?" Like, mm-hmm. okay, one one step at a time. Okay, we'll get there. We'll yeah. get. There. We'll do it. We'll get to it. But like, let's uh, help us scale up a little bit. That's yeah. All. So yeah. For now, we will put all the details on Instagram. You can catch us yes. on at Misconduct Pod mm-hmm. and reach out to us. Yes, please. And if you would, you know, now that we're going to take a break between seasons, if you would like to go listen to every episode again, maybe even six times, mm-hmm. we who are we to stop you? We are but mere mortals. Feel free to go listen to all of our other episodes over and over and over again. We recommend a healthy dose of six times. We actually demand it. Yes. <laughs> That's what it is. Let's just be entitled, Nisha. I think it's time, you know. <laughs> And uh, please go ahead. We are on every platform you can think of, literally. Like, or alternatively, I will come to your house and scream every episode in your face. <laughs> That is the other option. I'll bring my ukulele. <laughs> yeah, let's just be like, ah, in your moonji, right, wherever you are. And um, if you do listen to us, please also leave reviews. They really help us with engagement and mm-hmm. you know reaching out to a larger audience. Uh, so please leave reviews. Where Wherever you can, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, whatever it is, please go for it. And we will see you on the next season of Misconduct. 